Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make a phone case. Quite simple, um, good for beginner sewers, so like if it's one of your first goes, then you can have a go at making a phone case. So it's just one of those little like phone sock things. So basically what I've got is I've got some fake fur. You don't have to use fake fur, I just love fake fur because it's furry. Um, but it can be any, felt, whatever. And then I've also got some for lining, you don't need this, but um, this is a thinner one. It's like a silky thing, I think. Um, like a silk or a satin or something. Um, you can use anything again, cotton, felt, whatever you want. So that's basically, and then there's also, you can use like buttons and scraps and stuff to decorate it with. Um, but first we're just gonna cut out the shapes. So I'm gonna cut out the shapes for this first. And for that you need your phone. And then you just plop it sort of somewhere that looks roughly right. So say about there. And make sure you have enough space to do another one next to it. And then you use a pencil, it can be any pencil um, or chalk or something. I've just got a dress dressmaking pencil there, which I've got in a little sewing kit. Five pounds, John Lewis, good value. Um, so basically you just need to draw around it. Don't draw like right close, you need to draw like, as you can see I've done a bit of a line there already. You need to draw sort of about an inch away, a few centimetres away, and then you basically just draw around it. I'm just going to finish drawing where I have. So then basically once you've drawn around it, um, you need to draw around it on the other side, or you can make a stencil with it. Um, or you could just fold it over when you cut it out, which I suggest folding over when you cut it out would be the best one. Um, and then you need to do it on the other piece of fabric, and then you will start decorating. Okay, so now you um, should have cut out your pieces of fabric. Um, so I've got the lining and the out one, I can't remember what it's called. Um, they should be roughly sort of the same size. Um, so then you can decorate. So you're just going to find which one you want the top and which the bottom. This is going to be the top. Put the rest to the side and start decorating. So I don't know what you want. I've just found some colourful circles of felt. So I can put them on. They can be like sort of the eyes. And then some buttons there. Which you can put on the eyes look quite nice and then I'm going to do like a zigzag stitch with my sewing machine there and um, I've cut out some little white triangles of felt different sizes as you can see and they can be teeth it's a bit strange but um, I mean it's unique you could say so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sew all of them on remember don't sew buttons with a sewing machine unless I don't even know if they make special sewing machines for buttons but if they do then you can use that if you have one um, yeah, then you just need to sew it on. Um, okay, so when you have finished decorating, which I have, um, as you see I got the zigzag with the teeth and I also sewed on the buttons. I'll just show you close up how I sew them. You can just do the cross, but because, um, just to make sure it's extra secure, you can go around with the square. Um, just, you can work it out pretty much. And then I've done it on that one as well. Um, look out for some sewing, like, basic sewing skills on how to tie knots and sew on buttons and stuff like that, which will probably be coming soon. So basically when you've done that, you need to, um, sew the lining on. You can sew it when you're sewing the whole thing together, but I find it's so much easier just to sew it, like, now. Um, so basically you get one of your lining. Make sure that, because with this material, there is a shiny side and a non-shiny side. There isn't much difference, but find the shiny side. And instead of having the shiny side facing down, you need to make sure it's facing up. And this is a bit strange. It's facing up. We'll put the other one to the side for now. And what you're gonna do is sew around that, around the edge, quite close to the edge, but not too close to the edge, because you don't want it to go off. I'm trying to work out which way is better. Okay, that way's better. 
So you can pin it in place, which I suggest. Remember when you pin, put the pins going out. You don't want them going in because if the sewing machine runs over this little ball, you are hosed. But basically you just sew and play. Put some pins in. And then you sew round. Okay, so now it's lined. It kind of failed, it went a bit too far in. Um, exactly what I advise not to do. Um, but then again, everything I do fails. So there's a little thing. It might possibly fit, but I don't think it will. So then basically what you need to do is do it again for the other side, hopefully around the sort of same sort of area as this. Um, Okay, so now I've done both of them. I've also done a bit of a hem. Kind of failed, but it's a bit neater, I guess. Um, not really. Um, so, yeah. Now we're going to actually get to the fun and sew the thing together to make the actual phone sock. So basically you need to... So somehow I've managed to do the sewing on it, on the lining bit almost exactly the same, which is a bit freaky. So then basically what you're gonna do, wrong side, is you're gonna sew a long hair along the bottom, along that side, not along the top, otherwise you won't be able to get your phone in and it will be a bit of a pointless sock. But there it is. It's a little Monster phone case which failed. So you can make it bigger for sun um, sunglasses and stuff. But there's mine. And 